Hi, welcome to Vision Board Course with Charlie or VBC with me. If you'd like to join me on this journey, please feel free to email me at charlie at pillarsandfriends.com. That's C-H-A-R-L-E-E -E at pillarsandfriends.com. If you're already on this journey with me, thank you. I appreciate you. And you have your course materials already provided at terrycourses.com. That's T-E-R-R-I courses.com. There you'll find your assignment guide, your workbook, and the textbook. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me too. Today is week five, Living the Vision, which covers two chapters of the Dream It, Pen It, Live It book authored by Terry Savelle Foy. Week five, Living the Vision covers chapters nine and 10. Today we'll be reading chapter nine, what to do while you are waiting. What to do while you're waiting. Successful people have successful habits. Success is something you attract by the person you become, Jim Rohn. I recently heard that Warren Buffett was attending a din dinner party with Bill Gates and Bill Gates Sr. in Seattle. Bill Gates Sr. asked the two men, who are among the five richest men in the world, what they think is the most important skill for success. They both turned to him and said the same word simultaneously, focus. What do you do while you're waiting patiently for these dreams and goals to manifest in your life? What do you do when time is ticking and it appears nothing is changing? How do you stay optimistic in spite of what doesn't seem to be happening? You focus. Focus on what, you ask? Focus on a personal development plan. In chapter three, I shared how Darren Hardy, editor of Success Magazine, has interviewed the most successful people of our day. Howard Schultz of Starbucks, Richard Branson, Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, Jeff Bezos, Joel Osteen, etc., and related his observation that the common thread among them is their commitment to learning and having specific goals and plans. In chapter three, the focus was on clearly defining goals, but now I want you to notice how they have how they also have a personal development plan. Before you get overwhelmed by that statement and think this is just another self-help book, I want you to see the simplicity in this idea. You change yourself by changing something you do each day. How do you change and develop into the person you desire to be? You change your routine. Do you know that just by observing someone on a day-to-day -day basis, you can tell how successful they intend to become? No matter what day it is, just by simply taking note of the rituals and routines they adhere to on a consistent basis reveals where they are headed in life. It also communicates if you are headed closer or closer to or further from your dreams. The secret of your future is in your daily routine. Years ago, the late Jim Rohn was being mentored by a very wealthy man named Earl, Earl Schof. Mr. Schof made a strong statement to Jim one day that eventually altered his entire outlook on life. And I believe it will make a profound impact on yours as well. Mr. Schof said to Jim, what you have at this moment, you have attracted by the person you have become. Strong words, but that wasn't all. He went on to say, if you don't have much, perhaps you haven't become much. Obviously offended by such a remark, Jim held up his paycheck and matter-of-factly uttered, this is all they pay. Mr. Schof responded, no, this is all they pay you. The hard truth continued as Mr. Schof went on to say, don't they pay others five times this amount in your organization? Yes, Jim answered. If you were to qualify for five times this amount, wouldn't your paycheck be five times this amount? Then Mr. Schof added these life-changing comments. If you were to develop better skills, you'll earn better income. The key is to become more valuable by changing you. 
Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. As if those profound statements aren't enough to elevate your thinking, this one is the philosophy that says it all. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. If you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you'll make a fortune. Wow. If you really take those words to heart, I am telling you from personal experience, you will change your entire life. You will walk toward the very dreams you have pasted on your vision board. You will see impossibilities become possible right before your eyes. The Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. If you simply rearrange that very same scripture, you could say much is required in order for much to be given. The bottom line is this. If you want more, you must become more. Your life will only grow to the extent that you grow. If you don't like the size of your life, make an investment in the size of you. Grow into the dreams you have. Who do you need to become to achieve your goal? What you achieve isn't nearly as important as who you become as you're working on a worthy goal. As you're working on a goal, the goal is working on you. This entire book is worth that statement. The most ignorant declaration I made when I graduated from Texas Tech University was, I will never study again. Why? I concluded that I had paid my dues for studying for four years and graduating with honors. I believed I knew all I needed to know to start my future. Well, for 11 years after my college graduation, I lived up to my ignorant promise. I was a ghostwriter, editing and writing over 25 books for other authors. I worked hard. I worked late. I worked nights when needed. I was fully vested in the organization and wanted to do the best job possible. At the same time, I was working hard on my job. I lived paycheck to paycheck. I had a total of $1,000 in my savings account after 11 years of employment, nothing in investments, paid my credit card bill every month, paid my car note every month, and everything about my life was average. One morning in 2002, I decided to go to work on myself harder than I did on my job. Literally everything changed. I went from ghostwriting books to authoring books. I went from attending conferences to speaking at conferences. I went from watching television for hours to co-hosting a TV show. My income more than tripled. My savings goals were reached. My investment portfolio grew. What happened? I focus on a personal development development plan by making a few small changes in my daily routine. I am thoroughly convinced that if you change your routine, you can change your whole life. No, it doesn't happen in a day, but it all starts with one day. Successful people never stop growing. In his teaching on motivation, Zig Ziglar shares that Mary Kay Ash of Mary Kay Cosmetics told him she never got in her car without a cassette that she could listen to while driving. He also said that billionaire H.L. Hunt listened to cassette recordings until after he was 80 years old. And Wallace Johnson, the co-founder of Holiday Inns International, listened to messages every day and read two good books every month, even in his 80s. Alan Bean, one of the astronauts who walked on the moon, told Ziegler that on the way to the moon and back, they also listened to motivational teachings. These successful people represent the most goal-oriented people in the world, and they found it helpful to consistently listen to motivational teaching. Habit number one, focus on listening. What do you do while you're waiting for your dreams to manifest? In three words, build your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. 
also refer to Apostle Joshua Selman's teaching, Equipping the Saints. He also says that we study the word, hear the word, and speak the word, because by hearing the word, we build our faith. By speaking the word, we release our faith. Continuing, the first habit to adapt into your new routine is the habit of listening to faith-building motivational teaching. This very well could be the missing ingredient you need to see your dreams come to pass. The Bible, the Bible reveals to us that when we are born again, we accept Jesus as the Lord of our lives. We are instantly given the measure of faith. Each of us is given the exact same measure of faith. I was not given more than anyone else. Joel Osteen wasn't given more than you, nor Billy Graham or whomever you consider a person of great faith. It is distributed fairly. Being given the measure of faith is no different from each of us being given the same number of muscles at birth. If that is the case and everything is given evenly and fairly, then why do some people have bulging, vein-popping, eye-catching muscles and others have flab. The answer is clear. One has developed his muscles and the other has <laughs> neglected theirs. It is the same principle with faith. You may know someone who believes for millions of dollars and receives it, while another person is only believing to fill up their car with gas. What is the difference? One has simply developed their faith muscle to a high degree and the other hasn't. You need faith to achieve your dreams. The question becomes, how can I increase my faith? Refer back to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, and the answer is clear. Faith comes by hearing. When I discovered how vital and how simple this key is to fulfilling my dreams, I became a woman on a quest to build my faith as quickly and as intently as possible. I did not want to waste another 11 years of my life with underdeveloped faith. Building your faith is a choice, just as building your muscles. God gives you the choice to remain where you are or develop the kind of faith that can move mountains, just as that bodybuilder with developed muscles can handle more weight than the guy who rarely lifts. You can develop more faith to such a degree that you will simply believe nothing is impossible with God. The more your faith grows and develops, the more you can handle. As you listen to faith building message, faith grows. That's pretty simple, isn't it? At the same time, just as faith comes by hearing, faith goes by not hearing. This practice of building your faith needs to be incorporated into your daily routine. Your faith level. You can tell by the dreams they're pursuing. Notice our foundational scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing. This implies that our practice of hearing the word of God is in the continual present tense. We need to think of it as routinely as we do brushing our teeth. Let's not waste any more time. Studies have shown that the average American watches more than five hours of television every single day. That means by the time you are 60 years old, you will have wasted 15 years of your life glued to a box. Or, as I like to say, watching other people pursue their dreams. The average American is watching television shows they have no interest in anyway. The average person sleeps 30 minutes too late every day. The average person, 18 to 34 years old, spends nearly four hours per day on social media. If you're desperate for change, you'll take desperate steps to change. This fundamental adjustment in my life has produced more of my dreams than I can even explain. Entrepreneur Magazine conducted research involving the habits of the wealthy versus the poor. They were looking for commonalities in their habits to see what they shared in order to become so successful. In this study, they defined wealthy as anyone earning at least $160,000 per year with $3.2 in assets. 
they defined poor as anyone earning under $30,000 per year with less than $5,000 in assets. Here is what the study showed. Wake up three plus hours before work equals 44% wealthy or and 3% poor. Listen to audiobooks during their commute, 63% wealthy, 5% poor. Read 30 plus minutes or more each day, 88% wealthy, 2% poor. Exercise four days per week, 76% wealthy, 23% poor. Watch reality TV, 7% wealthy, 78% poor. Believe good habits create opportunity. 84% wealthy, 4% poor. The bottom line is that successful people have adopted successful habits. The first habit I want to introduce to you at this point in your vision board journey is simply the routine of listening to a faith building motivational teaching every day. Notice that 63% of the wealthy people researched practice the simple habit of listening to audio teachings during their commutes. Research has shown that the average person has an hour commute to work each day. Over a five-year period, that is 1,250 hours in your car, and that's enough time to obtain the equivalent of a college education. The successful attend Automobile University. You can actually get to a place in your life where you enjoy traffic jams. Why? Because you're growing, your faith is increasing, and your fears are minimizing as you listen to uplifting teaching. If the average American covers 12,000 miles per year in their automobile, that is the equivalent of spending 300 hours behind the wheel. Do you think your faith would be larger if you listened to 300 hours of teaching? When you look at your vision board on the wall displaying so many impossible looking dreams and goals, will you respond with fear or faith? It depends on what you're feeding the most. If you have 300 hours of faith building teaching deposited inside your spirit, you will respond with great faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. You are speaking the language of God when you respond with faith. How can you develop more faith? Faith comes by hearing. I want this so ingrained in your heart that you refuse to go another day without doing something to grow, increase, and make an investment in your faith. Back in 2002, I developed a hunger for more of God and more of his will in my life. I was tired of living each year with no progress, no goals, and no vision for my life. I simply purchased a C CD player, borrowed some of my parents' audio teachings from their collection, and wrote, push play on a sticky note and attached it to my bathroom mirror. I was endeavoring to start a new discipline in my life. I had no idea that this simple act of pushing play would alter the rest of my life. My goal was this. I'm going to listen to a motivational message for 21 days. At the end of that 21 day personal challenge, I didn't want to stop. I wanted to complete a full month. At the end of the 30 days, I put a demand on myself to go for two months. That was in 2002 and I haven't stopped. Here's the fundamental principle. As you listen to faith building words, something begins to change on the inside of you. Your faith begins to grow. Your love for God develops. Your belief in his mercy on your life expands. Your acknowledgement of his plan for you personally increases. Your dreams enlarge. Develop your own plan for personal growth by starting a routine of listening. Experts suggest that you must listen to something 16 times for it to finally take root. Experts suggest that you must listen to something 16 times for it to finally take root. I can promise you this, at the end of 21 days, you won't be the same person you are today. In addition, as you make this simple change in your routine, you are developing a winning lifestyle. Habit number two, focus on reading. 
Zig Ziglar told an inspiring story about a guy named Vince Robert who drove a taxi cab company. Roberts from Ottawa, Canada, had achieved a seventh grade education and began driving taxis for a living. At the age of 37 years old, he decided he was ready to make a change. Whether he acknowledged it or not, Vince Roberts began to focus on a personal development plan. He simply walked into a bookstore, bought a 20 pound Webster's Dictionary and, a, and set a goal for himself to begin reading. He placed this heavy book on the front seat of his taxi, and while he waited for customers, he began with page one. He began to learn and memorize the meanings of words he had only heard before. As he began practicing this new routine, he began to develop an appetite for learning. He wanted to know more. He began to grow and develop himself. As a result of his newfound knowledge, he decided that each day he would take the biggest fare of the day and deposit it into an investment account. After years of continuing this daily ritual, he ended up purchasing the entire taxicab company. Statistics show 58% of adults never read another book for the rest of their lives. 42% of college graduates never read another book after college graduation. 80% of U.S. families did not buy or read a book last year. 70% of U.S. adults have not been in a bookstore in the last five years. What are the rituals that will take you to your dream? Jesus is our greatest example. And in the book of Luke, we read about Jesus as a young boy of eight years old. Notice that we hear nothing more until he was 12 years old. The only point made in reference to the life of Jesus is the child grew. One translation says, and Jesus matured, growing up in both body and spirit. You should be on a quest for continual growth. I want to challenge you to do something to continually educate yourself by reading for 20 minutes each day. It's a great place to start if you are like me and don't enjoy reading. I used to loathe the thought of sitting down quietly and, sit and just reading. That was so boring to me. However, I began setting the timer on my phone to read for 20 minutes. And I recognized that the more I practiced the habit, the habit, excuse me, the more I began to desire it. Why? My thinking was changing. Clement Stone, publisher of Success Magazine, worth $800 million, had an interview with young Jack Canfield. He said, first, I have a question for you. Do you watch television? Jack said, yes. Stone asked, how many hours a day do you watch? Jack said, I don't know. I watch Good Morning America, the local news, the Tonight Show, probably around three hours a day. Stone said, cut out one hour a day. Jack said, okay, but why? Stone said, if you cut out that one hour a day and you multiply that by 365 days, that gives you 365 extra hours. Divide 365 hours by a 40 hour work week and you'll have nine and a half weeks of productive time. Then Stone said, I want that time. Jack inquired, what do you want me to do? Stone said, I want you to read, read in your field that will help you read stories, read psychology, read management, read media, read about this arena that we play the game in. If you do this, you will not only become more valuable to me, but to yourself. Jack Canfield later became recognized in the Guinness Book of World Records for having seven books on the New York Times bestseller list simultaneously. Do you realize that if you were to read one book each week, that would be 52 books in a year? In 10 years time, that is 520 books. Jack Canfield says that would make you in the top 1% in your field. Have you ever bit, been bitten by an elephant? How about a mosquito? These sound like silly questions, but the point is that it's the little things that bite you. It's the small, seemingly insignificant habits that you neglect 
that distract you from your dreams. Think about the little excuses we give ourselves. It's just one day. What does it matter? Nobody even sees what I'm doing. Reading for 20 minutes is not going to make a difference. I have so far to go. It's not even worth it. I can't hire someone to listen to messages, read books, declare my goals out loud, express gratitude for, to God for what he's done in my life for me. I think motivational speaker Tony Robbins explained the byproduct of these disciplines best when he said, people are rewarded in public for what they practice in private. You will be rewarded for your routine. Larry Bird, one of the greatest professional basketball players, wasn't known for being the most athletically talented player. Despite his limitations and certain skills, he led the Boston Celtics to three world championships and became one of the best NBA players of all time. How? His routine. Growing up, his morning routine was to practice 500 th free throw shots every morning before school. Yes, every single morning. His routine paid off. He was one of the most consistent free throw shooters in the history of the NBA. Years ago, my dad and I were at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport on our way to a conference when he wanted to stop by Starbucks, Starbucks and grab a cup of coffee. He ordered a low-fat, no-caffeine cup of coffee with 2% milk and no whipped cream. The barista yelled, one medium and no whipped cream. Excuse me. The barista yelled, one medium. Why bother? Dad said, what did you call it? She said, a cup of why bother. In other words, what's the point in getting any coffee at all when you're leaving out all the good stuff? We tend to feel the same way when we launch our new success routine. Why bother listening to a message on my way to work? Why bother cutting out one hour of television each night to learn? Why bother declaring my dreams out loud? Why bother expressing gratitude when I don't have much to be grateful for? Why even bother making a pointless vision board? In the beginning, all of your efforts will feel so insignificant and you have miles to go. So why bother? <laughs> the most successful people in the world bother every day matters. Every inch of progress is still progress. In 2002, when I began these little habits of personal development, I never dreamed I would still be practicing them. In addition, I never imagined what a monumental change they would produce in my life and ultimately enable me to live my dreams. What is simple to do is also simple not to do. The biggest difference in dreamers and dream achievers is that those who achieve their aspirations are willing to do what others are not willing to do. I can't help but think how most people don't see me Monday morning at 5 a.m. rolling out of my bed, slipping on my jogging clothes, going outside in the dark to jump in my car, driving to the gym, lifting weights, walking on the treadmill, and while listening to messages for a full hour. They don't see me return home, go into my home office, sit in my chase lounge, spend time in prayer over my vision board, write down what I'm most grateful for, express praise to God, declare my dreams out loud, rejoice as if they're done, then shower, get dressed and go to work. Most people scroll through our Instagram or Facebook page and just think, wow, she does book signings in Paris, France. She's on television. She just launched another new book. She speaks to thousands of people. My response to that is always, the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Change your routine and you can change your life. Habit number three, focus on three priorities. Focus is the key word in this chapter. If you wanna become, if you want to come to the end of this year with great results, greater open doors, then you must be highly focused. Focus is the opposite of distractions. When we have too many priorities, we lose focus and end up accomplishing nothing. I know that I have challenged you to write down 101 dreams that you want to accomplish in your lifetime. 
I have also instructed you on how to identify and list your top 10 goals for the year or the next 12 to 18 months. Although it may seem contradictory to my previous advice, I want you to narrow your focus even more. Warren Buffett has a method that has helped him achieve an unprecedented success. Here's what he recommends to realize your most prominent goals. Write out all of your priorities. Narrow the list down to your top three. Throw away the rest of the list. <laughs> Contrary to the total Buffett method, I do not recommend you throw away the rest of your list. However, I am advising that you get laser focused on your top three most important goals at this time. In other words, if you achieve these three goals, you would be exhilarated. When Warren Buffett was asked to boil the keys to his success down to one single principle, this was his shocking response. For every 100 great opportunities that are brought to me, I say no 99 times. He attributes his success to his ability to say no. In other words, his ability to stay focused. Darren Hardy asked the late Steve Jobs what he was most proud of in terms of all the breakthrough products he and Apple built. Perhaps you'll be as surprised as, at his response as I was. Jobs replied, I am as proud of what we don't do as I am of what we do. He went on to say, deciding what not to do is as important as deciding what to do. This statement bears true for companies, entrepreneurs, stay-at-home moms, authors, pastors, teachers, real estate agents, etc. Focus is just as much about saying no as it is to saying yes. What, what will you start saying no to in order to achieve your most important goals this year? Actor Will Smith said, to have the level of success that I want to have, it's difficult to spread it out and do multiple things. It takes such a desperate, obsessive focus. You really got to focus with all of your fiber and all of your heart and all of your creativity. What are your three strategic priorities? Darren Hardy tells the most intense story of focus involving Sir Richard Branson in his teaching called Darren Hardy Shares Secrets of Great Achievers. Hardy shared how he was approached by a friend who inquired as to how he could arrange for Richard Branson to speak at his success conference since Darren had a relationship with Branson. The friend went on to make this commitment. We will pay him. $100,000 to speak at our conference for one hour. Darren agreed to ask. He reached out to Branson's office and they declined the offer. Darren reported the negative response to his friend who then said, well, tell him we'll pay $250,000 an hour. They called back. Branson declined again. Determined now to see what it would take to have this gentleman who runs 300 companies worth $4 billion to come and speak, he increased his generous offer. We will send a private jet to pick him up and take him to the conference. As soon as his foot hits the pavement, we will have him back in the plane in under an hour and we will pay $500,000. Branson was not interested. Dumbfounded, they said. Okay, just give us a number. Whatever it takes, give us a number. Francis' office responded with this amazing answer. Richard is focused on three strategic priorities right now, and he will only allow us to allocate his calendar to something that significantly contributes to that achievement of one of those three strategic priorities and speaking for a fee at any price is not one of them. Darren Hardy points out this billion dollar remark from this story. Keep in mind, Richard Branson didn't just arrive at this focus. It was this focus all along the way that he ended up with 300 companies worth $4 billion. Obviously, 
We cannot walk around saying no to everything and achieve success, but we do need to narrow our focus by recognizing the distractions that are pulling on us. You may have heard the phrase that it's better to be world-class at a few things than mediocre at most things. What can you focus on that will help you become world-class at the dream you're most passionate about? There are some skills we need to learn and make them part of our top three priorities because improvement in a particular one will dramatically affect or have a ripple effect on the achievement of the other dreams and goals. For example, what if your goals included eliminate credit card debt of $15,000, enjoy a Bahamas vacation with family for $7,000, pay off my car for $8,000, save five grand, obtain my realtor's license, attend two success conferences, read 12 books by December 31st. Notice, out of these seven important goals for the year, there are three that could be identified as priorities and if achieved would ultimately affect the rest of the goals. If this goal setting individual were to, number one, attend two success conferences, number two, read 12 books, number three, obtain realtor's license, then the effects of these goals achieved could potentially increase their personal revenue. An increase in personal revenue would afford him or her the means to eliminate credit card debt, enjoy a dream vacation, pay the balance on a car note, and save money for the future. What do you need to identify as your top three priorities that could drastically impact the rest of your goals? Is it becoming a better writer? Is it learning a foreign language? If you were bilingual, could it possibly potentially double your income and help you achieve your financial goals? If so, then that would be one of your top priorities for the year. Is it developing better communication skills? Is it playing the guitar? Is it writing songs? Is it taking a class? Is it finishing a manuscript? Habit number four, focus on one goal at a time. Dave Ramsey says, total sold out focus intensity is required to win. You can't get ready, fire, and then aim with no money. You can't try to do six things at the same time. Ramsey goes far to instruct people to stop doing anything with money except paying the minimum payments. Stop 401k contributions temporarily. Stop saving temporarily. Stop paying an extra $3 on debts and to totally focus paying off the smallest debt at a time and then move on to the next. For example, if you've written down three big financial goals, then in order to achieve any of them, you must get focused on one at a time until it is accomplished. Maybe if you listed financial goals, such as save $10,000 by December 31st, eliminate credit card debt of $7,000 by December 31st, pay off school loans of $3,000 by September 1st. If so, focus on one at a time. Which one do you allocate your time, energy, and resources to? The smallest one. You focus on eliminating the smallest debt first. Your major goal should be paying off the school loan of $3,000. Focus all extra income toward achieving that one goal. Do not even consider saving money at this point. Pay off the school loan and then work diligently toward the second goal of debt reduction. Then start saving money. Years ago, I had my top 10 goals for the year, which included three different books on my heart to write. I was equally passionate about each topic. I knew the Lord wanted me to publish these works. However, because I wasn't focused on one project at a time, I was consumed with stress, frustration, and anxiety because none of them were complete. I had three half-written books impacting no one. Finally, I had to eliminate the distraction of the other two books and focus on one single manuscript, excuse me, manuscript until it was completed. Once I finished it, sent it off to the publisher, then I could move my focus on to the next manuscript. As John Maxwell puts it, 
Too many priorities paralyze us. Darren Hardy explains why animal trainers carry a four-legged stool when they enter a cage of lions. If you've ever observed this at the circus, you'll remember lion tamers carry whips, a pistol, and that rinky-dink wooden stool. Hardy claims that little stool is the most important stool of the trainer. Notice how the lion tamer holds the stool back by the back and aims the four legs towards the face of the untamed animal. Why in the world does he do that? How can a lightweight piece of furniture protect a human being from a ferocious lion? Simply put, the animal tries to focus on all four legs at once. In an effort to look at too many things at the same time, a certain paralysis overtakes him and the lion becomes docile, weak, and disabled. Clearly, his attention is fragmented and he becomes ill-equipped for what he was designed to do and to be. The same is true for you and me when we lose focus. We become paralyzed with inefficiency. Satan wants you tame, weak, and disabled, so you'll never achieve God's plan for your life. So he overwhelms you with too many priorities. We have to remember that there will always be an unlimited list of goals we need to accomplish, and priorities are always fighting for our attention. But if we really want to reach our goals, we must learn the skill of saying no. We must avoid those distractions competing for our attention to pull us away from our top priorities. When Joel Osteen took over the position as the lead pastor for Lakewood Church, the largest church in America, he was trying to do everything. A former television editor, now pastor over thousands of people, he had so many responsibilities. He was trying to do it all. His pastoral duties included everything from preaching and weddings to baptisms and funerals, while also maintaining his previous role of editing commercials, adjusting lights on stage, etc. However, with Joel being spread out all over the place, the organization came to a standstill. Progress was stagnant. Joel realized he had to stand back and determine the one thing that contributes the most to the success of his organization. He figured out that it was, the it was that 22 minutes on Sunday. <laughs> his inspiring faith-filled message of hope was the most important contribution he could make to impact the overall success of the church. When he came to this realization, he stopped doing everything else and focused on that 22 minutes message. If that weekly message was inspiring, hopeful, excellent, then it drove the entire organization. Every other department grew and impacted more lives as a result of his focus. What is it for you? Which area do you need to get laser focused because it will impact other areas of your life? Is it learning a foreign language, better communication skills, writing, delivering better messages, playing guitar, writing songs? Is it marketing, selling? Is it taking a class to obtain a special license? Remember, what you achieve isn't nearly as important as who you become while you're working toward the goals on your vision board. As you're working on the goals, the goals are working on you. Look at your calendar and schedule time to adapt these new behaviors of listening and reading into your routine. If you want to accumulate more on the outside, become more on the inside. Ask yourself, who do I need to become to achieve my dreams? God can't use you publicly until you've gotten victory privately. God sees everything. During all of those mornings when you force yourself to get up early and pray while everyone else sleeps in, you're becoming more. For each lunch break, when you read an encouraging devotional, instead of wasting the entire break scanning through social media, you're becoming more. And every commute spent listening to a podcast, you're becoming more. Preparation time is never wasted time. It's been said that the wealthiest places on earth are cemeteries. In the graveyards, there are books that were never written, songs that were never sung, 
and businesses that were never started. Don't go to the grave with your dreams still in you. Determine today that you will gain and maintain good habits that others will admire, that God will promote, and that God will lead you to prosperity and success. In closing this chapter, I want you to hear the advice of a very wealthy, very successful 100-year-old man who was featured in Success Magazine. When asked what he considered to be the most important for becoming the most important habit for becoming a success, he handed them a single sheet of paper and said, that's it. Every single word on there is vital, but that's it. The paper read, do fewer things more often and get better at them. If you want to succeed, focus is your key. Action step. Think about the most important things in your life. What do you need to focus on improving that would make, what do you need to focus on improving that would make the greatest difference towards you achieving your dreams? This concludes the end of chapter nine of Dream It, Pin It, Live It. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, hello. I see you got something out of it. If there's anything you'd like to share, feel free to put it in the comments. I thank you. You guys are going to be blessed um, for it. Let's use the lighting. And I will see you on Wednesday for chapter 10. This again is covering um, week five, living the vision. Take care. God bless you.